Uh, now the Queen will speak to the nation. Her speech will be uh, brought to her by her Canadian secretary, Mr. Henry Davis. She presents it to the Queen, a speech, of course, approved, if not written, in the Prime Minister's office. Queen Elizabeth II. It was on the 29th of March, 1867, that the ascent of my great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria, was signified in Parliament at Westminster to the British North America Act, which created the Canadian Federation. Precisely 115 years later, on the 29th of March of this year, my ascent was signified at Westminster to the Canada Act, embodying the Constitution Act, which, as Queen of Canada, I have just had the great pleasure of bringing into force by proclamation here on Parliament Hill in Ottawa. I am pleased and proud to be with you today, not only to celebrate the patriation of the Constitution, but to rejoice in Canada, its past, its present, and its future. If the ideal of the country, which Canadians wish to continue, building together may seem a defiant challenge to history, there is nevertheless reason to believe it can be realized. I have seen Canadians working together for the good of all the people. I have seen the vision of this country take shape in the lives of Canadians. There is now a greater confidence among Canadians that people of the two official language communities can live fuller and richer lives together than in mutual isolation. Among French-speaking Canadians, I sense a stronger realization that there are growing opportunities for them to play their rightful role in the development of Canada in every field and, indeed, at every level. Perhaps the most significant step in Canada's history was the decision of the communities to take pride in their several languages and cultures rather than to deplore the differences. Quebec was both the inspiration and the principal agent of the profound transformation which has resulted from that decision. Although we regret the absence of the Premier of Quebec, it is right to associate the people of Quebec with this celebration because without them, Canada would not be what it is today. Differences persist. In this vast and vigorous land, they always will. The genius of Canadian federalism, however, lies in your consistent ability to overcome differences through reason and compromise. That ability is reflected in the willingness of the ordinary people of French-speaking and English-speaking Canada and of the various regions to respect each other's rights and to create together the conditions under which all may prosper in freedom. There is, 
a historic relationship between the Crown and Canada's Aboriginal peoples. And I am therefore particularly pleased that this innate respect for fellow Canadians is also reflected in the willingness of the national and provincial governments to consult with the representatives of native peoples and to work out solutions to long-standing problems of rights and opportunities. Constitutional revision is really a matter of adapting to changing needs and circumstances, while safeguarding stability and providing protection for guaranteed rights. Change and movement are essential signs of life. The Constitution, which so splendidly met the needs of the very young Canada of the late 19th century, could not have anticipated the conditions of national life in 1982 and beyond. It is fitting, therefore, that the main features of Canada's new Constitution should be that it strengthens the rights of its people while establishing a process of amendment which will make needed changes easier to accomplish than they were in the past. Today, I have proclaimed this new constitution, one that is truly Canadian at last. There could be no better moment for me as Queen of Canada to declare again my unbounded confidence in the future of this wonderful country. May God bless and keep you all.